we are going to install a new mirror, which is a larger mirror. The mirror is 14 and a quarter wide and the wall space is about 14 and a half. And we do have some wires running up the stud over here that will just fit. Then we are also going to put a switch in here. So this ground fault outlet comes out, the box comes out, the wires come out. We'll determine which of these is the hot wire. Then we're going to run a new wire up from here to, I believe Dave wants it here. Uh, let's open this up. Mitch and Dave are working on the uh, deck right now. The stair railing, doing the top cap, and a couple of other things, fine tuning. Okay, so we are going to remove the outlet here. When you are playing with electricity, make sure that you turn off the power. spacers on it too to make it cut to the surface of the wall. Okay, so what do we got here? Alright, we have several wires coming into it and they are all uh, several wires coming into the box but only power wires going to the Outlet, you know, this outlet doesn't protect any circuits beyond at this point. Okay, so put that wire up. Put that wire over there. Here's the ground wire. side then okay let's find out which one is hot okay that is our hot wire that is the line in and the other two are Um, we're going to replace these with ideal okay let's uh, start pulling these things apart and that is what they were using for a wire staple not good okay then let's pull our wires out of the box These are all de-energized. Here's one. Here's two. This is the power in. And then we have our third wire here. One minute. I guess the guys want the power back on. They're trying to do some stuff out there. Okay, I just had to run and get my little hacksaw here.
seems the person that built this place heavily caulked everything. for the new 
light switch. Actually, you know what? This is a double wall here. So I can put these further back. And that will take care of that. Okay, let's um, wire up this stuff here now. And Dave has a four inch round box. It's a regular box, but Dave took the tans off and we're just going to stick it into the wall. And you can see it has a flat side on it here. And we'll just rest that against the stud and then put a couple of screws in there. And that will work just dandy. A five gallon bucket to stand on. stacker that has the wires in the wall deep enough that the mirror won't hit it and there is the other stacker there okay so here's what we have going on this is the live wire these are the neutrals And this is the new wire. So let's cut our insulation off of that. Always be careful cutting not to slip and slice your hand or finger or whatever. here they're by Klein Tools so let's uh, strip some of this off of here Here coming together, one above and the 
and load the other. So we're gonna twist those two together to hold them. Okay, let's recap what we've been going over so far in this video. Uh, keep an eye on the cursor here, and I will walk you through what's happening here. All right, so this started out with a single gang box in the wall there, and that included these three wires here, which is the power in, it would load one out, and load two out. Those are uh, two wires that were connected to the power wire and they just continued on to other outlets or lights and other circuits on the circuit or other uh, devices on the circuit. Okay, so what happens here is this ground fault circuit interrupter outlet was wired so that it uh, only did one thing. It just provided an outlet in the bathroom. Uh, there were no 
prior connections from the load side to any other uh, outlets or devices that would be protected by the ground fault circuit interrupter uh, breakers in the outlet. And the way they wired this is, here's the power wire, load one and load two black wires, and then a jumper wire that went to the line in on the ground fault circuit interrupter. And all three of those are wire nutted together. And then the same with the white neutral wires. In this case, they're yellow. All three neutrals were wire nutted together along with an additional jumper wire. So all three wires uh, connected over to the neutral side of the ground fault circuit interrupter. And so what we did is we added a new light over the sink. And this here is the wire going to the light. Uh, the way that the circuit works is we connected a black wire and uh, went from the load output of the GFCI to the new switch in. It's an unmarked. You, know, you can connect it to this or that. It doesn't matter. It's just a break in the line. So we connected the GFCI protected power out to the new switch and then the switch is a break in the line and then we have the black wire that goes up to the light and we connect that to the other terminal on the switch so power goes to the light and comes back through the neutral and connects up to the other side of the GFCI on the load uh, connection so you have the hot side out to the switch and the neutral side return from the light and uh, then we also had our ground wires we had load one and load two had short wires they were just cut short in the box and the power wire had a long section of wire left on it so what we did is we twisted the two wires from load one and load two together and we had about three inches of wire in the box and then we took the longer load wire and wrapped that with those other two and then we ran a green wire nut uh, we stuck the longer wire through the hole in the in, end of the wire nut and then brought it on down and screwed the wire nut onto all three wires with this wire sticking out through the end of the nut then we took the new ground wire from the light circuit and twisted that to the power wire the ground ground wire and then we also took a 12 inch section of ground wire and we stuck that through the hole in the wire nut and then twisted it down and tied all three of those wires together and what that 12 inch section of ground wire does is it gives us a section of wire to connect to the new switch and to the ground fault circuit interrupter so we have all the grounds are tied together now and so that pretty much recaps everything that we have shown you so far and will show you in the rest of the video so I hope you're enjoying the video hope you're uh, seeing all the steps that are involved all the problems that will arise and uh, this is a real live installation of a device and uh, this is probably how or similar to how you will have to do it yourself remember to turn off the power and if you are not comfortable doing this yourself get help from someone who's capable of doing it properly and safely this is uh, just something to help you out all right uh, so continue on with the video hope you enjoy the rest of the video and connect uh, all those wires to it now okay Sometimes it helps to put these wires in tape to hold them 
tight together so that you can get them fitted together. Goes to the line. <clears throat> goes to the line. The light will go to the load. The short side is the hot, which is a brass screw. The neutral side is a silver screw. Okay. Okay. 
the circuit. And it doesn't especially matter which of these you put it on. I'm going to put it this way because it makes it a little easier to get things in the box. Gives me a little more bend option. So the outlet is on and the switch is in and now I'm going to connect the light switch light. This is the new light fixture. See here, the mirror opens up and it's got another mirror right here. Oh. See, look. 
these are pretty cool men. circuit interrupter installed. We're just going to fill this with some mud. Have our light fixture up. We've got our mirror is in place. That's what Dave likes about the mirrors that it opens up real wide and gives you two mirrors. So the mirror is offset from the sink there but when you open it up then it's kind of centered okay all right so there you go and the lights protected by the ground fault light is on the switch so that is all official and kosher. Here we have, uh, that's where the uh, wall repair was made. And over here is where the ceiling repair was made. So those are working out pretty good. And the deck is all assembled now. All we have to do is put the deck coat down, and that depends on if we're going to use Spantex or Gecko deck. So we'll have to see. We have the ends of the rails. You know, there should be another screw on that side. But um, yeah, things are looking really good. Dave wanted this farm style railing. So we've got one screw here and there may be another one going on this end. We have our return pieces here. Everything's cut at the 45. Everything matches up nicely. And there is our railing down. There's our concrete bottom step. So that's working out really well. Our concrete landing here is working really well. We still have to get bolts to connect those uh, angle brackets up there for the posts. See the angle bracket up there. And these ones over here, those have the uh, bolts on them. I don't know if you can see them because of the backlight. So yeah, things are working out really well. Mitch brought down our work trailer so we could get more stuff done here, trying to help Dave out. 
we've all been friends for 50 years and uh, so this is more fun than anything else. Tomorrow is supposed to be a good sunny warm day and I think what we're going to do is head over to Goose Lake and teach those fish a lesson once and for all. And that's where Dave and I were driving a couple of weeks late ago. Let's go fishing, Dave says. And we got high centered in the snow and had to dig out and eventually someone came along and pulled us out. Okay, well, I'm done with the GoPro, so I'm gonna put this away and uh, then we're gonna start finishing up inside over there. All right.